Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I see we are uh, on time, which is something not usual for a Greek standard. So uh, Athens calls Athens deserves congratulations for this. And I'm sorry that I was not uh, uh, ready earlier. Uh, I was coming. So uh, let me share my presentation. Uh, is it uh, visible? Okay. Yes, it's perfect. Yes. So uh, I also want to thank uh, Prodromos, my colleague who took my place. So the, there was not any problem in the series of lectures. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the role of responsibility. This is something that uh, the subtitle, I added the subtitle uh, on my presentation. Uh, the initial uh, title was the dipole free market versus central planning under the current uncertain conditions. And uh, I added the subtitle uh, because this is the, uh, the essence of, the, of my lecture. So we are all familiar about the continuous debate uh, between uh, free markets and some kind of uh, government intervention. Uh, here I present you some simple definitions so we can start with. Uh, free market, uh, probably we all know, it's, uh, it means that the market uh, operates with private ownership as a means of production and uh, voluntary exchanges and contracts between actors. So no, no government intervention, it's the one extreme. The other extreme is the central planning, which means that the governments own the factors of production and uh, bureaucrats decide when, where, and how much is produced. Uh, what happens in reality is that uh, most countries are somewhere in between. Some countries are more pro-free markets, some others are more uh, inclined to government intervention, but uh, except very few uh, exceptions like North Korea, perhaps, uh, Cuba not anymore, uh, even in dictatorships, uh, there is some free market uh, going on. So most economies have uh, elements of both and uh, there are negative and positive aspects to state intervention. More state inter intervention means more taxation and more borrowing, which increases debt. And debt is something that is uh, not only for Greece, but lately many countries and the European Union as a whole uh, has to deal with, and it's an increasing problem. So the question, in the current debate is how much state intervention we need. I'm going to add uh, to see this uh, debate through the lenses of uh, responsibility. So we are going to shift the question if, and, and I'm going to support the idea that the, there is a question before before we put the question if we need more or less government intervention, there is another question, the question of how responsible we behave. So uh, the reasons for state intervention are uh, presented here, is to create the right institutions, the rule of law, police, uh, protection of property rights, of property rights, um, provide public goods, defense, public education, public health, roads, bridges, and of course, correct externalities. Our uh, current climate crisis is actually a result of uh, a big negative externality, which is the greenhouse gas emissions, and of course, the overuse of uh, uh, raw materials from Earth that advanced economies have the ability to buy and use, whereas uh, less, ad less advanced countries do not use. And there is an inequality here. 
uh, recently, uh, yesterday, I think, I read that uh, they agreed that advanced countries should pay some amount of money to, towards less uh, advanced countries, poorer countries, to cover for expenses due to climate crisis. And uh, that's actually right, because the United States, Europe, we use and we pollute much more than they do, and they suffer much more than we do. Uh, a recent example is the floods in Pakistan. Uh, so the major positive and negative aspects of state intervention, uh, they are more or less known. The positive aspects are uh, uh, basically what we just said, protection of property rights. Historically, all advanced economies used market economy to grow and become rich. Uh, but at the same time, they used taxation and borrowing to build strong institutions, a strong defense and a social network for, uh, for the poor. Uh, the biggest uh, negative aspect is inflation, which comes from uh, when central banks, at least one source of inflation, when central banks uh, print money as they did in the, during the crisis of 2007, 2008. Uh, here are the recent crises that actually gave a boost in uh, state intervention. So 2007, 2008, the credit financial crisis. We have an unprecedented amount of public money to save the financial sector. 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic. Again, an unprecedented amount of money to save economies which were halted due to the, to the lockdowns. And the current energy crisis due to the war, of course, uh, not only due to the war, uh, there is the climate crisis also. Uh, there is a need to shift to more clean energy. Uh, technology apparently is not uh, ready to help us in this uh, shift, or we need uh, more uh, investment on this uh, area. We also have food crisis due to the that Ukraine and Russia are the producers of uh, very large quantities of wheat and cereals in general. And again, the poorer countries are those who pay a greater bill. Uh, we in Europe uh, tend to complain all the time about the energy bills, but uh, we tend to forget that uh, there are other countries that uh, people cannot uh, buy food due to the rise of uh, food prices. And uh, here is uh, the concept of responsibility that uh, enters the discussion. It's interesting to visit the term responsible, which derives from the Latin uh, respondere, which means to respond, which in turn comes from the Latin spondere, which comes from the Greek spondi. Spondi is a kind of offer, solemn libation, says the dictionary. And Externalities is <clears throat> one major reason that we talked uh, before, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, about uh, calling for a state intervention is externalities. So it's externalities, the cornerstone of uh, corporate, the so-called corporate social responsibility. Even in the ancient times, Plato mentions the responsibility and obligation of uh, quarries and logging industries to be environmentally responsible. So although corporate social responsibility is a new term, uh, the idea is uh, not new at all, it's very ancient. Eberstadt argues that uh, the most characteristic link between modern corporate social responsibility, CSR for short, and ancient Greece is the Athenian institution of Horigia. Horigia again means sponsorship and again is derived from spondi. It's interesting that both words sponsorship and responsibility uh, derive from the same Greek word of spondi. And before the establishment of a modern state, there were the benefactors, evergetes, and the word first appears in the Hellenistic period, uh, especially here in Greece, before the creation of uh, the modern state, 
It's uh, everybody knows the Evergetes from uh, Epirus, uh, from the region of Epirus, uh, who built schools, institutions, and uh, uh, several. They did uh, important donations and basically were uh, the before the state. There were these people who created, we can say, a social network for. Uh, a social net for uh, for the poor. Uh, the the concept of corporate social responsibility, as the term, uh, as the, the name suggests, was initially for corporations. So it's the last only two deca decades that scholars have initiated discussion and expanded the concept of responsibility before, beyond the private sector. Uh, one reason that, uh, as we're going to talk uh, about competition, uh, let me see. Yes, uh, responsible public administration, responsible politicians, responsible governments are uh, currently uh, a very interesting topic. Although we don't see often the word responsible when talking about the public sector, what we see is we talk mostly about effectiveness and efficiency. And uh, uh, probably we see the word responsible in the use of public money, some responsible use of public money. But mostly we focus on uh, efficiency and effectiveness, but behind efficiency and effectiveness of the public sector lies the term responsibility. So responsibility creates trust. And the trust in public institutions is a necessary condition. Uh, we are not sure if it is sufficient, but at least it is necessary for people to be willing to pay their taxes. So to reduce tax avoidance and tax evasion that uh, we know very well in Greece is a problem. Uh, thus boosting individual responsibility. Uh, we remember that uh, during the COVID crisis, Individual responsibility was something that uh, we heard a lot about. So competition and social responsibility, and uh, uh, we were talking before about the corporate social responsibility and the why the term was coined for corporations. Uh, the idea that uh, social responsibility was first discussed about corporations and not smaller enterprises is exactly because big corporations have a lar large market power. So there is less competition there. Whereas small enterprises have a lot of competition and competition research shows that drives uh, firms to be more responsible uh, because people prefer to buy from firms that are uh, responsible, especially the last decades where the media do a great job in uh, letting people know about the good or bad things that firms do. So the question is, what about the public sector, which is not subject, subject to competition? Public administration, hospitals, schools, courts, police, local governments, central banks. Uh, one may say that, OK, that's why we have democracy and we vote every four years. Well, uh, of course, uh, we have democracy and uh, that's the cornerstone of uh, responsibility. But every four, voting every four years is not enough uh, because public administration doesn't change. The police doesn't change. What uh, changes in four years is the cabinet of ministries. So uh, probably we need to think of something else to infuse more competition in, uh, in the public administration. In some cases, people can vote with their feet. For instance, you leave the city you don't like and you go to live to another city where the taxes is lower or uh, uh, the mayor is better and uh, they, do, they have nice schools, uh, nice kindergarten, uh, roads, whatever is um, infrastructure but this is not always a solution and sometimes it's very difficult actually what happens nowadays with the migration and the refugee 
uh, and the large numbers of refugees is exactly that, is that people leave countries with authoritarian regimes and try to go uh, to live a better life uh, somewhere else. Uh, that's the result of interconnectivity and technology, which has which have increased competition among governments, and uh, also the media uh, technology uh, through has helped through interconnectivity. And uh, it's very easy nowadays to know and to we hear in the news what happens in all other countries. So people in poorer countries just decide to leave. Iran, for instance, or Afghanistan or Syria, and uh, go to live in countries where institutions work better. So it was much harder to cross borders, not anymore. A few decades ago, it was much harder to get news from other countries, not anymore. People appreciate and choose democracy over totalitarianism, freedom over repression and protection of property rights and strong institutional environments that offer them the opportunity to thrive. So people trust responsible public administrations and they are happy to pay taxes there. Uh, every two years, there is uh, a report from the OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, uh, which is called uh, Trust in Government. And what they measure is they measure how much people trust their institutions, the police, the judicial system, the education system, the politicians, everything. So this is a nice comparison there. And uh, it shows that trust is something very important. And governments want to build trust between them and uh, their citizens. Actually, one reason uh, here in Greece, we have a lot of tax evasion is exactly because people in Greece do not trust their government, not only the government, but uh, all other institutions. So the big question, as I foretold you earlier, is not so much uh, if we want smaller or larger government, so smaller or larger uh, government intervention. It's rather how responsible governments are in uh, managing taxpayers' money. Uh, so how can we make our public sectors more responsible? One way is by infusing competition where this is possible. There are some countries that have uh, entered the system of vouchers in public schools. So what, that, what uh, this does is they give more choices to the parents. So by giving the money to parents through a voucher to pay a public school that gives some uh, uh, that infuses competition among public schools so then it's a way to make them more responsible a one way uh, technology of course helps in uh, making citizens voice be heard so people comment all the time and evaluate agencies electronically uh, the other day I was uh, looking something in the, uh, for some, uh, for one tax office. And I saw the evaluation there and I was in, I said, oh, that's interesting. People uh, evaluate the tax agencies, local tax agencies. International comparisons and lists of uh, best practices is very important. And uh, this is where international organizations do a great job. For example, I mentioned uh, OECD. Uh, there is the World Economic Forum that produces every year, uh, except the, couple, the last couple of years due to the pandemic, uh, I think. They have stopped uh, producing the competitiveness uh, report. Uh, there is the IMD, which produces also a competitiveness yearbook, and they compare 60 something countries. The World Economic Forum includes 130 countries. The World Bank uh, does such comparisons. Uh, it has a database of 190 countries on almost all countries. Increasing transparency and accountability in public agencies. Transparency International is another international organization that does exactly that. 
uh, decrease physical contact between uh, citizens and public agents. That's what uh, digitization is about. So citizens don't have to uh, go through bureaucratic uh, uh, ways and uh, do not have to be in touch with uh, people so they don't have to pay them uh, illegally. Uh, so digitization helps towards that direction. And of course, continuous evaluation. Uh, in order not to punish uh, somebody who, I mean, a, a public employee who doesn't do his job, but mostly to give him more incentives to be responsible. So the, the point here is not to punish. The point here is to become responsible and to, to uh, be more efficient and to use taxpayers' money in a better way so that you can increase trust in people and so people do not uh, complain when they pay their taxes. Uh, so concluding, <coughs> what lies behind today's turmoil? Several consecutive crises, the pandemic, Russia's invention, uh, invasion, Inflation, energy crisis, totalitarian regimes, irresponsible actions. We talked about uh, competition. And uh, if we think about it, a totalitarian regime means that uh, there are no elections. So they are not uh, controlled by anyone. So it's a kind of monopoly. And if you have the monopoly, you can do whatever you want without being responsible. So totalitarian regimes are not responsible. <laughs> we don't expect them to be. <clears throat> um, why today's conditions seem to be so bad? Uh, we often hear that uh, it seems we approach a nuclear uh, war and uh, the end of humanity. Well, uh, that may not be the case, but it does mean we have to let back and, and say, okay, uh, there is no... There are serious problems, of course, but uh, and there are many crises at the same time. The climate crisis, the food crisis, inflation. Um, inflation, I want to say something about inflation, which goes back to the, to the first question regarding if we want more or less government intervention. Inflation, at least some research, says that uh, it's because of the irresponsible, we could say, behavior of uh, central banks, which produce so much money in order to infuse so much money in the, in the market, and now we pay the bill. Um, of course, uh, one reason we want uh, to decrease uh, debt is because it's uh, a kind of irresponsible behavior from our part to next generations, because it's the next generations that they are, they, will be called to pay the to pay the bill and the, the debt that we accumulate right now. So in order one can say that in order for us to live better, we borrow money and then our children, our grandchildren, we pay the bill that may not be so responsible. So the idea is to make us think of how we could uh, keep an eye and keep our mind not only focused on our uh, problems, but try to expand our uh, mind and think of uh, other people and think of our next generations and think in terms, in global terms, and uh, the climate crisis is such a global problem. So uh, nowadays we need to, we do that to some extent, but apparently we need to do it uh, uh, at a greater extent to think uh, at a global level and uh, put uh, into perspective our problems with the problems of other people, which uh, uh, in our case, because we, are, we live, we have the luck to live in uh, an advanced country, so we are by definition more uh, rich and our problems are relatively smaller than uh, other fellow humans problem in other parts of the world. That was it. Thank you very much. <laughs>